Beloved in the Lord, the peace of the Lord be with you all. As in doing come on. Hey Jolly. Aha nyum tifa fa mami. I especially welcome you to this special program of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, the Presbyterian Hour. Beloved in the Lord, may we all join our hearts and minds in humility as we worship the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. One thing I have asked of the Lord, and that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Amen. Amen. We continue by singing Presbyterian hymn number 20. sit and pray. I want you to thank God for the gift of life today. The psalmist says that I lay down to sleep and I arose because your mighty hand sustained me. Beloved, let us give thanks to God for the gift of life today. Beloved, I want you to continue to pray, to commit today's divine service into God's hands. Remember to commit the chief officiant, who is the moderator, into God's hands, and all members of the General Assembly Council who assist him into God's hands, that God will find them worthy of his use this morning to his glory. Please pray. That as we gather in his name, the presence of the Holy Spirit will be with us. Please bring your prayer to a close and unite your heart with me as I pray. Almighty God, who has made the church your dwelling place, be pleased to manifest yourself to us, your servant, who meet this day in this holy place. Inspire our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty Father, accept we as we have dedicated ourselves anew to you, and enable us by your grace to obey you in all things, and to yield our hearts and lives to your service. Grant unto us a purer love to you, a deeper devotion to our Lord and Savior, a truer loyalty to your church, and a stronger desire to proclaim your kinship and to glorify your name. We ask these things through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and is worshipped and glorified with you and the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is taken from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. 
Now, Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see the strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now, the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now, go. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. The word of God. Gospel chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, friends. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of light, in your light, may we see light in the preaching and hearing of your word. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, um, to be ordained colleague ministers in the Lord's Vineyard, I have come with a very humble message for you, and the message is basically this that you have come here in this solemn service. And by the way, let's be mindful of the fact that the church triumphant is here. The heavenly host is here. The cloud of witnesses, they're here. Because they have a stake in what we do here and now. They are interested in how we follow in their footsteps. So Zimmerman is here. 
and Reese is here. Samuel Otu is here. Paul Umueno is here. They are all here in their numbers. They are here to cheer you on. They are here to say, we'll do all we can to help you succeed in fulfilling your call. So you have come into the presence of the triumph God so that officially you are sent forth to go and fulfill your calling. You may have specific calling, but I want to speak to you about the general calling, if you like. And it is this, that you have been called to go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them, making them ready for the final consummation, making them disciples of heaven, members of the kingdom of heaven. And in doing so, fulfilling this calling, there are real and present dangers. It is not a walk in the park, as some will want to think. But the Lord who called you is faithful. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And if you remain faithful in fulfilling this calling, he will invite you into that blissful existence with him. Your highest reward will be to be counted faithful in fulfilling your calling. So may it be well with you. What does it mean to be called? For me, it means to be assigned a specific God-given mission to fulfill. It starts with what I see as an experiential encounter with the Lord, the master of the mission. And we can make reference to the call of Moses, the text that is placed before us. So Moses can say, the Lord said to me, and Isaiah can say, I saw the Lord. And Jeremiah can say, I heard him. Ezekiel can say, he appeared to me. Experiential, that subjective relationship. You saw him and he says, this is the commission I'm giving to you. A calling. And whatever the calling is, it invariably relates to the relationship between God and his creation. The well-being of God's creation and the glory of God. Of course, I want to make a big room for error, but that's my understanding. Now, whatever your calling is, it has to do with the relationship between God and his creation. Betterment of that relationship and the glory of God. Would you fulfill your calling? For our purpose, as I said, I'm talking about the general calling. And I'd like to make reference to our father Moses, that experiential encounter. A certain theologian, David Beck, calls it a momentous trivial. Something that was supposed to be ordinary, but would change history and change the life of Moses. So God revealed himself to him. And he said, this is the task I'm giving to you. Go through you, I will deliver my people from the land of slavery, from Egypt. So Moses was sent, and he worked, fraught with dangers, that mission. And please note this. In Exodus, God was delivering Israel from Egypt. In Numbers and the books which follow, God was delivering Egypt from Israel. And Moses was to help bring this about. They've come out of the land of slavery physically. They've learned the ways of Egypt. For them to have that meaningful relationship with God, for God to be the head of the theocracy, that community, they need to have a heart transplant. They need to be given a new heart. They need to study, learn the ways of God, the father of the theocracy. And Moses was to teach them, deprogram them, if you like, help them to unlearn the evil ways of Egypt to bring them to the land of Canaan, land flowing with milk and honey. Friends, in our text, um, New Testament tells the gospel read to us, and the ending to which I read from here, Jesus tells his disciples, I send you all authority on earth and in heaven has been given to me. I send you, go make disciples of mine. Make disciples of all nations for me. And he continues, he says, teaching them everything that I have taught you. Teach them to obey. So you, you realize that the mission, the calling of Moses, is not too different from the calling of Jesus that he places on us, his disciples. And that's your calling too. To bring people to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, tell them a Savior has died, lead sinners to accept Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior with the help of the Holy Spirit. Remember, Christianity is a supernatural way of life made possible only by the Holy Spirit. A person is born a Christian. It is not a set of rules that people try to follow. And that is where the world doesn't see 
the difference. They see people in church and they think that once they are in church, they are necessarily believers, but that is not it. Your calling is to make people believers. The new birth, what we have in John chapter 3, believers, born again. It appears to be the case that for many, this beautiful organism, living organism called the ecclesia is just a club that one can join. But the Church of Christ is not a club that one can join with their own rules. Ananias and Sapphira tried it, and the Holy Spirit won't have any of it. It's not a jamboree. So that is it. The calling is about making people believers. The world is asking and waiting to see the expected change that the church will bring to the community, especially in Ghana, and they are disappointed because they are waiting too long. Friends, your calling is to make people disciples. The nurturing bit of it, teach them. Deprogram us of the ways of the world and teach us the ways of God, the norms and values of the kingdom of God. Through teaching, admonition, encouragement, even warning, even warning to take the old sinful ways of the world out of new believers, making them fit for the life in and of the kingdom. To be like God their Father and have the nature of God, to be holy because God their Father is holy. And I believe this is where the bulk of your work lies. Discipleship. Discipleship. Making people like their Lord Jesus Christ. The people you help bring to Jesus. Taking time and teaching them. Teaching them to take after the likeness of God, their Father. Bringing them to that meaningful, flourishing, blissful relationship with God who is the head the father of the theocracy, his church. Let them grow in the nature of God. And this is what the Apostle Paul, our senior brother, has to say about this aspect of your calling, of our calling. He writes in Colossians chapter 1, verse 28 and 29, he says, To them God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Then he talks about his style. He says, him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. To this end, I also labor, striving according to his workings, which work in me mightily. To this end. So that is really, if you like, the crux of the matter for me. And this is where in theology we say we have been saved we are being saved. We shall be saved. Read the epistles. All that apostles were doing was preparing the people of God for the final consummation so that their heaven going aspirations will be realized. It seemed to me, it seemed to many, that when we look at the scripture and what it says about heaven, many of us will be disappointed when it comes to going to heaven. Because what is in scripture, the, the standards that are required, we don't, or we, we appear quite oblivious of these standards. We're doing anything and everything, and yet we say, heaven hall, heaven hall, heaven hall. Paul says, present everyone given to me as perfect in Christ. And Jesus said in John chapter 17, Father, those you gave me, he presented them back to God. You gave them to me. None of them is missing. Awokomokobaba. Not just something to represent something. So our own promised land for me is that holistic, vibrant, blissful relationship in truth and in spirit with God. The shalom, that blessed well-being. What? Our moderator calls the from fromness, the holistic well being, that relationship with God, which culminates, which is consummated by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you will fulfill this calling, if you help me, you, the ones you minister to, if you help us, if you help those that have been given to you who, who sit before you day in, day out, Sunday after Sunday, if you help them to realize this from fromness, this, this holistic well-being, this shalom, this, this 
this blissful, living, vibrant relationship with God, that they become members of the kingdom of God and, and they are having going aspirations and not are not truncated, and are, are not disappointed, then you have a lot on your hands. You have to help us, your followers, to appreciate the need to be God-fearing and God-loving. You have to help us, especially in Ghana, not to be wise in our own eyes, you know, where everybody thinks they're wise. You have to help us to be true citizens. Uh, interestingly, the, the Greek, ancient Greeks, um, has classifications of of people in the society. They have the idiots, they have the tribesmen, and they have the citizens, the citizenry, if you like. The idiots are those who are person Kuminya once, he is okay, he doesn't mind whatever happens to other people. If he is fine, fine. So he will still, he will do whatever. It's all about me, 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 and myself. Then the tribesmen, once me and my party members, we are okay, we are fine. The world can go to Serbi places. I mean, we don't care. The price, my, me and my family people, me and my, you know, nuclear small group of people, cronies. But the citizens are those who say, I am because we are, you know, all for the common good of one and all. It is a person is a person through another person, the Ubuntu concept. You have to help us not to be wise in our own eyes and end up being Serbio idiots. And you see, in the, that definition, I think the distance between what the, what the English call idiots and what the Greeks call idiots is it, not too far. It's not too far. Help us to be citizens for our own sake so that the from firmness will come. You have to help us to appreciate cleanliness. When we say Nyamia this year, how are we Nyamia this year when we put up with such despicable field? I mean, walk around town and you ask, whatever happened to nobility? To civility. Why, why are we this dirty? So you have to join the campaign. Ecological integrity and environmental cleanliness. Otherwise, that from firmness will not be real. You have to help us to appreciate what God has made us. That we are blacks. And testing this inferiority complex. If it's about Ghana, if it's about Africa, there be, it has to come from somewhere else. So when you say... Oh, Nimanina Wabrochi, that in itself alone is an achievement. I see Wabrochi is 35 miles away from heaven. Why, why can't we make our own better? And we can. If you consider all that God has given to us, you have to ask the hard questions. Don't just come here and say, go in peace, it shall be well with you, when you don't know those factors which militate against their peace. And you don't know the fastest which militated against my well-being. That one, Sebio, anybody can say it. Rise up and shout. Ah, ah, I receive it. I receive it. Amen, amen. That one, anybody can do it. But you have to be concerned about those factors militating against my well-being and roll up your sleeves, get your hands and work at it. So recently, we had the public lecture. Um, and Papa Motita said, it hurts my soul when I preach to people I know that those I'm preaching to don't have jobs. Let's walk the talk. Let's intervene. Let's go out there and make things happen. So we're exploring how to um, harness prospects, job prospects in our country for our people. If the front frontness will come, you have to be concerned about this. You have to ask the hard questions. Don't just feed the poor. You have to ask, why are they hungry? Why are they hungry? And beloved friends, you have to speak truth to power. If we will be true to the gospel that we preach, if we will be true citizens, okay? And remember, the Christian is necessarily patriotic because your calling, per your calling as a Christian, you have been made, you have been given to your society as a gift to go spend yourself to make the society better, touch lives, and leave indelible prints in all these people you meet. And they stand before me and say, but for this man, I wouldn't have gone to school. But, this woman, but for this woman, I wouldn't have been healed. My hospital bills would not have been paid. That is how Jesus became great. When he left his prints in all these people he encountered and he helped them. So then you ask the question, why is our country like this? And we are satisfied with 
tenth class work when we can do first class work. I, I, I dare to say that it will be true to our calling. Ghana will be better than any so-called first world country. What don't we have here? Talk about the human and natural resources. We have more than enough. But for the, I won't add that. And sometimes it doesn't even make sense when we steal the things we don't need. Can say demon be as a and so ah hey mumma yen say no eh you know and then like there is no tomorrow there is work to do and this is where we factor in the dangers that demands that real and present dangers beloved fulfilling your calling is not a walk in the park it's not it's not a pastime it's not a leisure activity to say the least it's not easy you are called to face death. I mean, you see, you are rising up against the works of the enemy like your Lord Jesus Christ. Destroy the works of the devil. You will insist on the right things being done. You say you have been called, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11, to expose evil. You think the devil will have it? The devil won't have any of it. It's like you are putting your hand in the hornet's nest. Who does that and doesn't get stung? Who does that? Do you gather fire in your bosom and not get burned? So when you find yourself struggling, know that it's part of the deal. If you just be us here, here and just maintain the status quo, then the devil even is your friend. You, you're fine. But if you rise against him, he's not sitting down and watching you and say, okay, yeah, they know. He's going to come at you with all his followers. When you feel like giving up, remember you are in good company. You cannot do what Moses did. You cannot do what Isaiah did. You cannot do what Jeremiah did. You cannot do what John the Baptist did. You cannot do what Jesus himself did. You cannot do what his disciples like Peter, Paul, and all the rest of them did. You cannot be inspired by the same Spirit of God who inspired these to do what they did and not suffer like they suffered. It's not logical. If it's the same principle... If it's the same condition that I play, then it's not logic to do what they did and not suffer like they suffered. It's not possible. So when the pressure mounts, when you feel ostracized, sometimes when you feel like this is the end of it, I tell you, remember, you are in good company. So Jesus himself warned in John chapter 15, in this world you will have trouble. If they did it to me, what makes you think they will not do it to you? The real life examples of his followers bear testimony to the truth of Jesus' warning. My friend, take heart. Just take heart. The Lord who called you is faithful. God said to Moses, I will be with you. I like the forgive me. Um, okay, maybe I'll not say it, but there's a saying. You might know which group of people say it. It is not possible for the gates of hell to prevail against the onward march of Jesus and his disciples. So take heart, he's with you. He says, I'll be with you to the end of the age. In Isaiah, God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The prophet Balaam in Numbers chapter 24 bore testimony to God's faithfulness in keeping his word when he said, God is not man that he should lie or the son of man that he should change his mind. Has he promised and he will not do it? The story is told of George Livingston, whose wife died. He was a missionary in, um, um, in Africa. His wife died and he stood at the graveside to bury the wife. And he read the text that we've read, Matthew 20, 28. And he concluded when he said, Behold, I will be with you even to the end of the age. You know what George Livingston said? He said, These are the words of a gentleman with the highest honor and he will fulfill. So if in your calling you are having to lose, to grieve, even to die, that is Jesus' calling upon your life. You are required to be faithful even unto death. Not to chicken out when duty calls for danger. You will not get that reward. Remember, when the going gets tough, and the going will get tough, if it doesn't get tough, I, I like to say again, I post it, I submit that something has to be wrong. I will put a billion question marks at your calling. It has to be tough. And when it goes tough, remember the tough in us, the indomitable Holy Spirit in us, he gets going. 
So then your enemies wonder, how is it that we are throwing everything and anything at him and he still gets going? We are saying all kinds of things about him. He still gets going. We threaten him and and he calls the bluff and he gets going. What is it about him? This is where the experiential encounter comes in. Because you know what you've seen. So Stephen, when he was doing so, said, oh, now I'm a mobile. I see heaven open and Jesus was standing at God's right hand and he was welcoming him. Professor Marty said, as though to give him a standing ovation. So he saw something. The world was not worthy of him. Where are they? Where are they who will prove to the world that we have something worth dying for? Not a minya yeni. God wants them to see something. And you know what? You love, just, just abandon yourself unto him. He's faithful. Let him hold your hands. After all, the mission is his. And he's going to perform it through you. Only through you. You are an instrument. A conduit. And he will glorify his name. I like this evergreen hymn titled in heavenly love abiding published in 1850 um and a warring he invites us as disciples of jesus to abide in the lord jesus Christ. her hymn reads in heavenly love abiding no change my heart shall fear and safe is such confining for nothing changes here the storm may roar without me my heart may low be faint but god is round about me and can i be dismayed Wherever he may guide me, no one shall tend me back. My shepherd is beside me and nothing can I lack. His wisdom never waketh. His sight is never dim. He knows the way he taketh. I like that. Bit. He knows the way he taketh. And I will walk with him. That is what Paul Omoanu is telling you. That's what Zimama is telling you. That's what Samuel Otu is telling you. They walked with the Lord. That is what Paul is saying. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Just trust in him. And you fulfill your calling. Then when all is done, when he has done this through him, then he can say of you, come you worthy servant. Come into your master's blissful existence. Enjoy what has been prepared for you. That is your greatest and highest reward to be counted faithful. Amen. Moderator say, these persons standing before us have completed the mandatory two-year probationary service in the church. By the grace of God and by dint of character and experience, they have all been recommended by their respective presbyteries. I now present them to you, so you will pray for them and be held by others to ordain them so they become full ministers in the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. Moderator, they are so presented. Thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King and Head of the Church, who being ascended on high, has given gifts unto people for the building up of the body of Christ, by that authority, we have met here, and also by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, to ordain the Reverend Frank Yao Ano, Rita Obey Anson, Norbert Yiviri Ayamo, Carl Henry Clark, Eugene Selom Dublo, Ebenezer Ni Ayi Hammond, Stephen Crunchy Hansen, Lionel Ni Odati Marcus, Edward Opoku Mesa, Samuel Safo Mesa, Theophilus Opoku, Theophilus Tekwete, Eric Ni Noy Thompson, and Doris Chumesi, to the office of the Holy Ministry by prayer and the laying on of hands by those of us who are called to do so. In this act of ordination, the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, as part of the Universal Church, worshiping one God who alone is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, affirms anew its belief in the gospel of the sovereign grace and love of God. Through Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, incarnate, crucified, and risen, God freely offers to all people, upon repentance and faith, the forgiveness of sins 
renewal by the Holy Spirit and eternal life. He commissions them to labor in the fellowship of faith and to call all people throughout the world to enter into his kingdom. Please let us pray. Almighty God, who gave the church people to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, graciously behold these your servants, whom we, in dependence on Christ, the head of the church, are setting apart for the same ministry. Confirm, O oh God, for them the call these have received from you, and endue them with power from on high, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are going to pray for these ordinance. It's a long journey. We're going to pray for God's help, God's special guidance for them. It's a very serious ministry. We are praying that the Holy Spirit himself will so descend in a special way. Pray for them from the beginning to the end of their ministries. Pray for special grace from on high. May the Lord lead and guide them. Oh, pray, please pray, pray for them. Pray for the Holy Spirit's grace. Let's pray against any blockade that the evil one may bring their way. Let's stand in the blood of Jesus Christ to reject any satanic influence. Let's bring our prayers to a close. One does here drum of boy mondo jolly put on where you're by sort to have me. I won't. I can make me near up wow, okay, be a nigh a beer. Ne walk a jam of crown about here. Benny, oh, be he call be a new hotel and me. Kaba on Nichimon, Ling, and I remember two number war years with Christo, or here in Yambia Safuemi. One two am a one wooding. One be moved for here, yes, with Christo by me. Oh, I can die, lady, oh, bah, and I mean, your book, no talk about Omufo. Now, may I oil while I am yes to Christo by me. Malek, I may come here for no Jamena, he will lay. He will die, maybe I don't just show you while I hear over me. One Biaka, about ten la he go in who you are memory. Nick Bay, a shame of Bemley. Now, my Yanamia would tie a yes to buy me. Hey, yeah, yo, hey, now, but so you are heading with my forging yo. Don't you want my friend? You want to tell me how I lay? Yeah, yes, Christo Babi. One be a good be in a yarning. Only the Wulak Amaya. If I am a poor and no job, only the Wulahi Jame. No fair now, Penny. Katia, she are no job on a penny and yea, you must say. How are you okay? Leave me out. One be a good doom here, what you are a fair and no job. One fit a me while I lay a yes, Babi. Ni mo ken chone ken ni chumo ena no aba kposu suma ya bo Yesu aba kposu suma ya efe ya Yesu wo bi a kedun cho ala kon kon la do force o shesu an wo e ka bi gon no no ato am o kadi kadi a ta me gbe e gbe fon gon no Yesu he no mo no ha me ni wo bi a kedi a ta wa me gbe fon gon no Yesu je mo e ko ko mo koni o damo wa me ba se bo Yesu wo le a ke boju wo bo ba he you want to talk, you're not by a how you not by a to Babu and Nunto. How old drama I hit them out? You will be a camera coming with me, I may not be a good name. I may not show you my hero, Lena. I may not lay no me, Liaka, but you know what? Oh, for time, one wash it down. How many be naked? Ah, yes, Christ will not talk by me. Amen. Amen. Jesus confirm my heart's desire to work and speak and think for thee. Still, O Lord, let us guard the holy fire and still stir up, O Lord, your gifts in us. Send down, O God, your Holy Spirit upon these, your servants, whom we, in obedience to your blessed word, are ordaining to the office of the ministry. Cleanse them, O God, 
from all defilement of body and spirit. Touch their lips with a burning coal from your altar as you did for Isaiah. Equip them with the gifts of your grace that they may boldly, O God, proclaim your word and, and your will. Make them a light to those who sit in darkness, watchful and loving guardians over your flock, that in all things they may fulfill their ministry without reproach and in the end be received with all your faithful servants into the joy of your Lord, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Reverend Frank, Yao Anno, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you a lawful minister of the Church of Christ and commit unto you the ministry of the Word and Sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. May the Lord endure you with power from on high and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth my fruit. <coughs> and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. 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 Jesus says, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. Amen. Rita, obeying answer, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you, a lawful minister of the Church of Christ, and commit unto you the ministry of the Word and Sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. The Lord undo you with power from on high, and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit, and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. And so proved to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. Amen. Reverend Nobet, Yuri Ayamo, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you, a lawful minister of the Church of Christ, and commit unto you the ministry of the Word and Sacraments, instituted by Christ our Lord. The Lord undo you with power from on high, and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit, and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage, rest in the Lord, and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. Jesus says, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit shall abide. Amen. Amen. Reverend Carl Henry Clark, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you, a lawful minister of the Church of Christ, and commit unto you the ministry of the Word and Sacrament, instituted by Christ our Lord. The Lord endure you with power from on high, and make you a blessing unto many. 
May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit, and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. 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 The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. 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 The Reverend Eugene Salom Dovlo, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you, a lawful minister of the Church of Christ, and commit unto you the ministry of the Word and Sacraments, instituted by Christ our Lord. The Lord endure you with power from on high, and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit, and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. 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 The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me. But I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. Amen. Reverend Ebenezer Ni Ayi Hammond, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you a lawful minister of the Church of Christ, and commit unto you the ministry of the word and sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. The Lord endure you with power from on high and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. 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 The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. 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 Reverend Stephen Crunchy Hansen, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you, a lawful minister of the Church of Christ, and commit unto you the ministry of the Word and Sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. The Lord endure you with power from on high, and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit, and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. 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 Jesus says, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. Amen. Amen. Reverend Lionel Ni Odate Marcus, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you a lawful minister of the Church of Christ and commit unto you the ministry of the word and sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. The Lord endure you with power from on high and make you a blessing unto many. 
May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit, and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. 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 Jesus says, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. 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 Reverend Edward Lopoku Mensa, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you a lawful minister of the Church of Christ and commit unto you the ministry of the Word and Sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. The Lord endure you with power from on high and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. 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 The Lord be your light and salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. Amen. Amen. Reverend Samuel Safu Mensa, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you a lawful minister of the Church of Christ and commit unto you the ministry of the Word and sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. The Lord endure you with power from on high and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. 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 Jesus says, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. Amen. Amen. Reverend Tiflos Opoku, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you, a lawful minister of Christ, and commit unto you the ministry of the Word and sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. The Lord endure you with power from on high, and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit, and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. 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 The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. 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 Jesus says, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. Amen. The Reverend Tephilos Tepete, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you, a lawful minister of the Church of Christ, and commit unto you the ministry of the Word and Sacraments, instituted by Christ our Lord. The Lord endure you with power from on high and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. 
Amen. Amen. The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. 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 Jesus says, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. 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 The Reverend Eric Nenoy Thompson, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you, a lawful minister of the Church of Christ, and commit unto you the ministry of the Word and Sacraments, instituted by Christ our Lord. The Lord endure you with power from on high, and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit, and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. 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 Jesus says, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear fruit and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. Amen. The Reverend Doris Chumesi, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you, a lawful minister of the Church of Christ, and commit unto you the ministry of the Word and Sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. The Lord endure you with power from on high, and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit, and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be your light and salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and be with your spirit. Amen. 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 Jesus says, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. 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 Now, the ordinance will go and robe. Now, the Reverend Frank Yao Ano, Reverend Rita Obeying Anson, Reverend Norbert Ivri Ayamo, Reverend Carl Henry Clark, Reverend Eugene Selom Dovlo, Reverend Ebenezer Ni Ayi Hammond, 
Reverend Stephen Crunchy Hansen, Reverend Lionel Ni Odate Marcus, Reverend Edward Opoku Mensa, Reverend Samuel Safo Mensa, Reverend Theophilus Opoku, Reverend Theophilus Tepete, Reverend Eric Ninoy Thompson, and the Reverend Doris Chumesi. Now I, right Reverend Professor Joseph Obriyabuamanti, moderator of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, declare that today you have been ordained to the office of the Holy Ministry. Go therefore and feed the flock of God and tend them, not by constraint, but willingly, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not as domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock so that when the chief shepherd is manifested, you will obtain the unfading crown of glory. Go and preach Jesus. Go and teach Jesus. Go and heal in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to the ordained ministry and congratulations. Brethren, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord God of Israel lift up the light of his countenance upon all of us and give us his peace, his real shalom, and the blessing of God Almighty, who alone is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Be with all of us now and evermore. Amen. People of God, we thank God for such a wonderful moment in his presence. No one comes to the presence of the Lord and leaves the same. I know you have been blessed. Therefore, on behalf of the leadership of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, we want to thank you all for being part of this special program, particularly all our donors who have continuously given in support of this program. We say God richly bless you. You can also donate to support this worthy cause for the expansion of the kingdom of God through the account details on your screen. And as we always do, we shall acknowledge your donations duly. We say God richly bless you. As the church, we are always ready and our doors are open to also guide all of us in our Christian journey as we walk with the Lord. Therefore, our team of counselors are always on hand to guide us and to pray with us. And therefore, you can contact the team with the contact details on your screen. And we shall be glad to pray with you and to guide you in your Christian journey. Beloved in the Lord, until we meet again next week on the same channel and at the same time, 
We say God richly bless you and stay blessed and be preserved through the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.